Whenever someone else would come around and tell me about something that you can definitely do in a game that totally wasn't just a fake thing they made up to waste yeah. my time, I'd be pretty excited. Yeah, no, nah, there is a lot of like urban lits, myths and legends and things like that. It's such a shame how this kind of thing doesn't exist anymore. I guess it does kind of exist, but it's not what it used to be. Like back then, there were like things that you could like, everything is verifiable now. Like there's no, there is no World 9 in New Super Mario Bros. DS. And this fucking guy, bro, this fucking... Uh, Amon Safariwala would like swear to God he's like bro I unlocked World 9 I unlocked World 9 and I believed him I'm watching this this short of my recommended YouTube can like read my mind dude cause last stream I was talking about the whole like uh, hot coffee mod from from GTA San Andreas and that was another as far as I could tell it was actually like a real mod but it was like there were like rumors about it that were not real but it itself was a real mod the files of the hot coffee mod were not in the game that they just accessed it was like they just made it from scratch at least that's that's as far as I know update to GTA online answers like maybe one thing and then it bro wait does he mention like the uh Jimbathy stuff because I remember there was this youtuber called Jimbathy look the gold ray gun GTA 5 jetpack this is a big video and he he just faked everything in the video. This guy was a fake news god. For land on your dick! You put Skyfall cheat on, oh my god, you're flying through the skies. Dude, yeah, no, this is all like, it was either VFX or like it was some mod or something like that. And he would go around like pretending, like he, the whole video, he did not like make it seem like he was joking even once. I remember this. This is where I got my inspiration actually to do the kind of watermarks that I do because this is not a noticeable watermark at all. Unless you know it's there, you'll never see it in the video. In fact, you could put it even more in the corner. But if someone wants to steal the video, when they're on that alert like thing and they want to put it up on some other platform, it's going to be there. This is the perfect way to make your watermark. And literally in the video at some point, he shows like a tweet from Rockstar. It's just like an inspect element, like some fake Photoshop tweet of like, oh, congratulations, Jimbathy, for, for finding the thing. And no one went and like fact checked it. I remember growing up thinking these videos were real. Also, in my last video, I mentioned, I said like, I'll tell a story later. It's not even that much of a story. I mentioned Leah Marie Johnson and how I like met her. Back when I was hopping from MCN to MCN, there was this one called Awesomeness TV or Awesomeness.TV. And there was another girl, I think Tila Dunn or something like that. But Leah Marie Johnson was like the face of it. And I was kind of involved here and there. And I was getting okay views. So I was actually in one of the Google Hangouts and she was in it. She was like, you know, being like a representative for the MC and I'm sure she was getting paid. But I got to talk to her like in like a Google Hangout thing, like a one-on-one -on -one for like five, 10 minutes. And literally the whole time she was just promoting her movie. It wasn't even her movie. It was the awesomeness team. Like the, the thing was a production thing. And I think they were trying to get all of us in there to be like super hype and like tell other people about the movie. It was this movie called Expelled, I think. I forgot his name. He used to be uh, pretty like well known on YouTube or whatever. Not like as a YouTuber, but just like a bunch of fangirls. And there it is. There she is. That's Leah Marie Johnson in the movie. So this was like a, it was like a production call. They were in the process of like budgeting the movie and doing all that stuff. And then they wanted to get us hyped for it. And that was what the call was for. And they were talking production the whole fucking time too. She fell off, dude. Like with all the Instagram live stuff and all that, like this kind of stuff, she really fell off. I remember back when she was on the Fine Bros. She was so fine, bro. I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm I'm three years younger than her. I was a kid at the time. I could say that. But yeah, I was I was deep into that whole like just different strategies to try to, to try to grow on YouTube. And a lot of it people were just trying to sell you into their MCN. I was a part of full screen. I was part of freedom.tm with that one guy running it, like George or some shit like that. Most fucking annoying, like punchable guy I've ever encountered in my life. There was uh, one by owned by Disney, I think. Oh, I forgot what it's called a T. It's like not like treasure or something. It's, it's something like that. It was Maker Studios. That's what it was. And they tried to hold my channel hostage, but as if I wasn't a fucking minor, as if I couldn't go like, hey, I'm 12 years old. You, I'm literally about to void my contract right now. So yeah, they, they let me go. And I, it's not even that they were bad. I'm not like trying to throw shade at Disney or whatever. They weren't a bad uh, MCN. It's just I wanted to join Curse at the time. So I left them and they let me go. And then I tried to, I applied for Curse and I didn't get in. I also, I also made a plan. Right now we're watching One Piece. I also want to watch, re-watch rather, for like the fifth time, VGHS. I checked the first episode again. I checked like the picture or whatever. And it's got I, Justine in it. I totally forgot I, Justine was in VGHS. And she was in the Hot or Not video. 
by uh with with ksi she's kind of a youtube og right back in the day she was so hot dude and i remember in like 2011 there was a point where it was not even it was like two months or whatever where she had like black nail polish black nails she had an interesting little charm to her because like you know the other girls on youtube at the time like there were like the lindsey sterlings who were cool because they had like an actual skill right but they had kind of a childish like the fact that they had a skill was kind of like she's adventurous they had this uh, aesthetic that was like it felt like they were always acting off impulse all the time but yeah the look of like the, uh, the aesthetic of like early 2000s girls was god tier i justine is not like a high tier but she was she was in it, you know? Yeah, see, she was definitely a part of that whole wave, but she wasn't like a top tier for the time. I can't find any pictures of her with the black nail polish. That shit had me fucking bricked up when I was 11 years old. Okay, so I'm about to get into this. I, I was thinking about this and I'm like, let me make this a stream of consciousness, but no, nah, I just wanted to, it, there's not even that much to say. There's a lot of idiots who don't have their priorities in order who make it big on YouTube and then try to leave and go do Hollywood. Or they try to like become a rapper and get some record deal and abandon YouTube, right? And I say that it's idiots that do this because those are the only kinds of people who would, they don't realize what YouTube is. YouTube is the end goal. It's, it's the end goal and the entire race and the starting line. It's a starting line and finish line, both. Let's say you work in Hollywood and you don't have enough money to be your own boss. You need a manager or an agency. But if you have enough of a following to be your own boss and to make your own money in the process. And you know what? Not even charge your viewers any money. Why would you still choose to? You would only do that if you're at such a low level that you have to charge your viewers in order to make ends meet. But if you can make money literally by giving people free entertainment, why would you not choose that? You have to think about what YouTubers are. They are titans of entertainment in general. They don't need anyone else. Why would you decide to take your ownership of a profitable company that you have and give it away, to give a percentage of it away, so that way you could slave away working for someone else? Like, dumbasses, dude, seriously. Like, Super Hot Fire and like DDG and Lale Hansen, all these people, they're actual idiots. And I'll say it to their face, and because I can back it up, I'll, I'll, I'll straight up explain it to them. And you know what? They'll agree. They'll agree and they'll regret their decisions. They may not seem like they would, and they might get mad or whatever, respond on Twitter, be full of pride and lie to themselves, like in their own coping mechanism. They try to, they lie to themselves to try to convince themselves, they, they try to convince the rest of the world that they made the right decision so that in the process they can brainwash themselves into thinking that they made the right decision instead of coping with the fact that they made the wrong decision. But I'm not buying it and I'm not gonna like pretend like this kind of idiocy should be encouraged or even praised in the case of DDG. He made a dumbass decision and the day that he decides to drop his pride and really think about it, he, he'll know, he'll, he'll admit that he made a dumbass decision. I just messaged these guys to hop on. Let me tell you guys about the little story of, of how my, my first channel that ever blew up. I had a lot of YouTube channels and none of them really started to do well until high school. I have a bunch of other channels too and I'm not gonna tell you about them right now. I'll tell you about them one day. But my first channel to ever blow up was not at all what I expected it to be. The YouTube channel that I was telling you about, the one that got successful, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to make it a successful channel. It was literally, it was completely unintentional because it was actually a backup channel and it wasn't even for my like YouTube videos. It was for footage. Cause like what I would do is I would go and do video shoots for people. That's what I started off doing for some like, let's say like Instagram influence or whatever, right? But it's like wannabe Instagram mm -hmm. influencer, someone with like 5,000 followers. And so I'd get like four hours of footage for them. I'd make like a one minute little Instagram video. And because of like, of all the, the headache of storing footage. Like, like my videos are 15 minutes long and they're like 15 gig, 20 gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of like how much storage it took up, I needed a place to put it. So I tried all these different things. Back in the day, there was like Amazon Drive that let you have unlimited and then they took all my stuff down. I tried Mega NZ, all these different things. <laughs> but um, there have been times where I used these kinds of services to get like decent quality backups. But then I'm like, let me just upload yeah. it privately to YouTube. Cause uploading it to YouTube is basically, if you think about it, YouTube, you can upload like a 10 hour long backup. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's what I used it for. You can literally upload yeah. movies I, have them private. And so that's what I was doing. I was uploading like 10, 20, and, and if, if it was too long, if it was longer than 12 hours, I would chop up the video a little bit, render it out, in like the best possible quality, upload it, and YouTube would ruin the quality a lot, but it was nice to have that backup, and it came in handy quite a few times when people were like, oh, I need this footage or this thing. 
because I said this thing to this person and I want to get like a record of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it actually, it came in really, really helpful. And I did this because there were times where I needed footage and I didn't have it. So this is my ultimate free backup solution. That's literally all it was. I just needed a place to put my like original footage. Starting in 2016, in the beginning, like in like March or something of 2016, in the summer, in like July, like right before school was about to start again, I'm going through all my channels, all the channels I had. I had a ton of channels. And I'm like, okay, let me like check the stats. Let me see what's working. I'm going to put it all in an Excel sheet, all that stuff. And I like input a few things in an Excel sheet. And I'm like, I look at the pie chart and I'm like, bro, why is 98% of my views coming from this channel? And I look back at it and it says 600 subscribers. What the fuck? Who's watching my video? I just made the videos public because I'm like, hey, might as well, you know? It's always the most unexpected thing. That's what happened. That's, I swear to God, that's what happened. I did not expect anyone to watch it. If you look at what it was, I still have some of that footage. What it was is like, it's like peak IRL streams. That's really what it was. And it was, all the videos were getting hella watch time. And back then that mattered a lot more. That channel did really, really well. And then by like, November, it was it was really, really popping off. By the end of the year, it was like a few thousand subscribers. And then later on the next year, it's kind of fuzzy. But a few months later, I had like 15, 16,000 subscribers. And then my videos started to get taken down for, for copyright and stuff. Because I would actually start to upload a lot. Yeah. Wait, so you lost footage because of that? Yeah, Because they yeah. deleted it outright. But oh, all that, that footage doesn't really matter so much anymore. That footage is all for old, older clients that I used to work with and stuff. Around like the area that I live, a lot of people wanna all be like famous rappers or whatever. So I, I look at like that, that situation that I did, I was just fearless with my uploads. That's what it was. I was just relentless with it. And then I look around me and I look at people that make it versus people that don't make it. I tell people who wanna get into music because people around me don't wanna do YouTube. They wanna get into music. I tell them, I'm like, you just have to consistently release music. That's everything else is optional. The only thing that is mandatory in this game is to consistently consistently release your music. And everybody always had all these excuses. They're like, I need a logo, I need a banner. Everything What's else is point? excuses. <laughs> Even things that sound like yeah. good excuses are all excuses. Or they're all like, yeah. oh, it's not gonna get views, or this is not my style of thing, or like, and even if it sounds good, it's all still excuses. Oh, it'll look, it'll look bad. Oh, you're giving away the recipe. You don't want to make videos like this. I don't know how to promote. It's not a good rollout. It's oh, a waste I don't of my think time. My is good, good enough. I don't think people look yeah. at my channel. It's it's just too, I don't think I have enough time. too many excuses. And that's what screwed all these people. Everybody that I saw that like let go of all their excuses. They're like, you know what? All my equipment is good enough. All my stuff, my lights and everything, it's all good enough. I'm just going to go for it. They all made something happen. They all like did something incredible. Yeah, that's uh, the, that's the point I'm at right now. Like my computer is good enough to render 4K. That's all I could ask for. You know, Ugly God, the rapper, he blew up literally from recording his voice on like his laptop microphone. You know, Migos, right? There's the rappers, one, Migos. Um, yeah, Migos recorded their first three albums in their fucking closet. You know the rapper the Kodak Black? His first song that blew up was literally from a YouTube type beat. He didn't even ask the original guy for the beat. He just downloaded it like YouTube to MP3, like low quality, shit quality. And that's what he rapped on. There's no rules. There's no requirements except for one. You have what, to put your art out there. He's not the kind of person who would go like, oh, I can't release a song. My equipment's not good enough. Oh, I don't have the right engineering for this song. I don't have, he, like all these people that make it, you look at their early stories, they just go in with whatever they have and they don't put up excuses. There's no excuses for it. It's the people around me up. say the same excuses that are still valid for these people. Oh, I don't have a producer to make my beats. Oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. But they make it happen anyways. I would I would like find a video idea, find some trend or something like that, hop on the trend and immediately capitalize. I would not, and other people, I'd be talking to other people and they'd be like, oh, I gotta make sure my thumbnails proper and all this stuff oh yeah, i want to yeah. video like this i'm trying to do that as well they'd be so focused on all the little intricacy little details <laughs> little all these things that people people just want to sell people something they want to sell them some like course on youtube they want to sell them on like oh keep watching my youtube videos so that you get more advice on all the little youtube features that help you improve your videos but like really it, it's only like marginal improvements. Yeah, the only requirement is consistency. That's it. Yeah, having like intros and outros and all that stuff, that's cool and all. And like the fancy transitions, all that stuff can come later. The first thing that needs to happen is consistency. And like 
never letting off the gas. People nowadays are too concerned with doing things right that they don't do them at all. I gotta upload my videos like this, I gotta render them out on my computer, then upload them 4K to my YouTube channel on, on the, like the PC so it <laughs> uploads right and all that stuff. Dude, the moment I started uploading videos just straight through my phone, like not even worried about the quality and not even like worried about the description or anything like that, that's the first moment I actually saw any YouTube success ever when I stopped caring about all the little details and just started going hard and uploading as much as I could. That's the when I saw it. This actually <laughs> fucked me up in high school. At one point, the channel was making me like good money and it boosted it, it uh, how much my ego. Like at, at its peak, at its absolute peak, before the videos got removed, I was collecting $2,000 a week with such little effort. I got like kicked out of school for, for all the shit that I would do. I would talk back so much. I would like go around like if I was earning any more, I might have like slapped one of the teachers or something like that because I was making more money than them. And I'm like, I don't want to hear this fucking like bitch talk about the quadratic equations or whatever. I had workarounds. I didn't have a bank account at the time, so I literally couldn't get it. So like literally just to even get the money, I got it in a way where it wasn't reported to the IRS. When you're earning that much money when you're 16, you're burning through it. I did not get to enjoy a yeah, lot of that yeah, money. Yeah, no, I could believe them. I was, I know, I was yeah. everywhere I was going. I was like, oh, let me, I go through a drive through I'm like, oh, can you pay for I'll the pay person for behind it. me? Every single time I pay for the person behind me, every time. I, would, I didn't know what to do with all that money. It's Viv. This was a girl that went to high school with me. She was in my grade level. She like, we knew each other. She came over to my house a couple times and things like that. She made all of these while we were in high school. We were rivals. And dude, it was all just because like she was hot at the time. So everyone would view her videos and then she moved schools and everyone over there viewed her videos. And she was like a thought, you know, getting my belly button pierced. You could tell from her pattern right here she does not actually care about YouTube. They put a little bit of effort, they get a spike of motivation, <laughs> and then and then they're like, okay, that sucked. I don't like doing these oh, kinds of videos, no, and then they stop. And actually, she has an OnlyFans now. My oh. friend told me about it. And then we're like, hey, we gotta subscribe. This, Vivian, M okay, I guess it redirected, but she had an OnlyFans. It was 50 bucks a month, so we're like, fuck that, bro. We're not getting that shit. This was like a little animation yeah. I made from some tutorial on YouTube, like some After Effects animation. And I just copied the, the tutorial entirely and I sent it. I texted Vivian. I'm like, hey, yo, you want this? And she's like, oh, yeah, I want it for my YouTube videos. And I'm like, you got to pay up then. And she never paid me, so I never gave it to her. But it, it's on YouTube anyway. <laughs> you got to pay up $50 and then you pay for the subscription. Yeah. <laughs> this is my setup back then. This is the setup that, that I made those YouTube videos on right here. And I did it on a Mac. Nobody does this on a Mac. The kinds of videos we'd make, we'd spam everything. I was making Brawlhalla videos. We were like going on like dating sites, like this like Indian dating site called Shadi.com and all this stuff like <laughs> trolling people. We like we were doing prank calls, all kinds of crazy oh. shit. This was like one of the community posts I had. A F R A S Z. That's not my name. My name is A F R A A Z. The reason why it was this is because you could pronounce it the same way, and the name of everyone in my crew at the time, which is crazy that it turned out this way, it was. Afraz, Faison, Rahim, AK, Shauner, and Zoib. There's a, there was a video I made back then that I wanted to just recreate because it's not on YouTube anymore. All those videos are gone from YouTube and I remembered this video recently. And I think it can get good views now too. But you can make it if you want. You know those like random like shitpost videos? They don't do nearly as well as they used to. But like back when they were first popping off, I made one that was Kung Fu Panda with no animals. You know those like memes, right? Like, oh, this thing but with no thing that's essential to that thing. Yeah, it was just two minutes of the only parts of the, the only parts of the movie that had no animals in it. It was just it was like a one minute thirty second long video, and it got like twenty k views after a week. I made cooking videos too. There was this guy that cooking. we knew. He had some beef with someone else in in our school. He's like, oh, I can cook better than this guy. It was this guy named Charzo, oh. and he's like, I can cook better than this guy. His name is Nick, and we're like, okay, prove it. So we went to his house, recorded like him cooking this like crazy like elaborate thing. And then like we all try it out and we just did it for free food. But I upload those videos anyways. I used to promote my videos hella on Reddit too. But then when I stopped was when I actually started seeing success. You know like the social blade stats or whatever, how you can see like your channel rank? At one point oh, I know. in 2016, I was in the top 200K most subscribed channels of all time. Right. I think I peaked at like 179K or something like that. When me and my friend shook our hands to say we were gonna make a YouTube channel together, you were making it. We never made that YouTube channel by the way. This was, uh, nah, I've had plenty of those. I've had plenty of those where I'm like, let's make a channel and we never ended up doing it. This was honestly just straight luck. It was straight luck. I did not intend for this channel to blow up at all. 
It was just it just happened. But when it happened, I did good to grow it. Not really grow it. I did good to get views and capitalize off of it. But I did not grow it the way that I should have. And none of it was about me. None of it was like my personality. Some of it was. A little yeah, bit of it was. Always comes down to- the entire channel was either videos to get views. Like, remember when DJ Khaled's Snapchat was like blowing up? And like everyone was watching his story? So... People were searching on YouTube for like the sto- for the archives to his story, but nobody was downloading it and re-uploading it. So I was re-uploading it and I was getting a ton of views. But then people would watch that on my channel, they'd leave and they wouldn't want to watch the rest of my stuff. They wouldn't want to watch anything that I made. And then the uh, second kind of video I'd make would be like my kind of video, but it was not marketed at all. I just kind of hoped and assumed that if I'm getting views on one kind of video, then it would transfer to my other ones. But it really didn't. It did a little bit. It did a tiny bit, but not really anything meaningful it was like it was the kind of videos where i'd show off like it would be like i'd upload one of my school projects up onto youtube and so that way everyone in the class like i could point like the girls could see like how the hell do you have this many subscribers how does this video have like 700 views the 700 views is not that much for that many subscribers these videos would not get views like that it was a bad strategy i learned a lot from it i did i did it was just spamming I uploaded Jerry Springer clips. I made like YTPs of like Jerry Springer videos. I did that like four times. I put a lot of hours into making a bunch of content that really did nothing for me. That really promoted other people and never me. I would like get things from Amazon, like tech stuff and and show off like cool, interesting technology. I tried everything. Before my channel got all of its videos removed and like I got the strikes on it and everything, the adpocalypse hit. Do you remember where the adpocalypse? Yeah, there was a month where I got 120,000 views and I got 80 cents for it. I got 80 cents for 120,000 views. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine what it must have been like for YouTubers that were actually like that that needed to do YouTube to like pay rent. Like they do that it must have like ruined their lives. After the strike expired and all that stuff, I tried to like salvage the channel, but I wasn't getting any views and the videos were gone and there was all these issues with the channel like shadow button pretty much not um i wouldn't say so it's Did more like pause? yeah a lot of my features were restricted i couldn't live stream i couldn't do any of that stuff i had i literally had like restricted features strike shit ah uh, yes so i ended up actually deleting the channel after a while because it was dead it was dead dude. like there was no Did you not try like messaging youtube and shit i i tried to salvage it for like two years like I was that like oh. attached to the channel. I was that attached to it. I tried so many things, but the whole time I was just keeping it on life support, and I just like I ended up deleting the channel. Oh, just pull the plug, man. You gotta pull the plug. I'm glad I did. I didn't know why I was doing it. It just felt right to do. And even then, I was like I couldn't justify it. It felt like a stupid idea. But now it's it feels like I prestiged oh. in Call of Duty. I've now prestiged. I've, I've yeah, now yeah, reached yeah. the next level. Yeah, I'm ready to do it again with a few with a few head starts. YouTube was always shit, part of the plan yeah. for me. I don't like, know, same here, yeah. same here. I've always thought about it, I've never forgotten about it. You, we were talking about a dark sense of humor, right? You know you share elite humor when you send each other videos and you go back to rewatch it and 80% of them are unavailable. So much shit that I had that's all gone now because of like dark humor or whatever. Actually, there's no point in me even sending it because they're all, the, all the videos are gone. <laughs> Just paste them through until you find one. There might be one or two that's still available. How bad is this on YouTube alone? The stuff that was allowed back then is just not allowed now. What, like throwing up videos, Mac Mofo and shit? No, 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 like just like 9-11 jokes or like Holocaust jokes <laughs> and things like that, you know? That kind of oh, stuff was just not yeah. allowed on YouTube anymore. Yeah, oh. And then people started and said, bro, my mate, oh, bro, hold on. Well I'm gonna keep going through, but this is like sad to see because the, some of these channels I still actually have that I'm going through. All these channels have like three subscribers. Tell me when you find one. I'm trying to look for something. Two hundred night subs. Though. That's not fun. Um, he did send back. I think he submit any more. I don't want any of the uh-huh. saluting and shit. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And all that yeah. shit and put up in different ways and shit. Oh, what was it? What's that iconic? Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. If you understand. Like, I'm not sure, bro. It'll be deleted off everything. I think that's like the only other place it could sit in. Were I know why these are I know what these videos were I know why they were removed. Harassment and bullying. Uh, they didn't give a reason for that I guess. This was one of my old channels. This channel does not exist. This was on that channel. This video no longer exists because a YouTube account associated with this video has been terminated. There's another one. 
There's another one. Do you remember like the oldest, oldest videos you were making on YouTube? Well, whatever's left of them, yeah. Because I was a young child and a foolish child and deleted the ones I wanted to keep. Yeah. So my channel, I got very embarrassed. I deleted it even though I didn't even know the kid personally. We all did a lot of stupid mm. things. I deleted a lot of my old videos. Everyone did. Everyone did at some point. I really wanted these ones because if I showed you them, you'd see how authentic they were. <laughs> I'm looking for authenticity. I don't want to show you this because I was pubescent. Don't bother, uh, don't bother, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I'll take off my headset. I, I'm the very squeaky kid and then there's another squeaky kid, I'm the brown one. Let's go! Uh, Let's do a team roll! Uh, bro. You cringe. I remember like every part of the map too, I remember exactly, I know exactly where you are. <laughs> I always went to the shop to rob it. Give me, give me this is so <laughs> wholesome. <laughs> Nine years ago, 2013. Nice. Happy Wheels, why no vids? Oh, bro, 2013 YouTube was different, bro. I know. Different. It was just, it was just a bunch of like, a bunch of like goofy <laughs> people who just wanted to have fun and just put it up on camera. That's all it was. I actually enjoyed watching YouTube. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like I have to look through 20 million recommended dated yeah. and then i'll find one. Smosh used to hit different back then. Yeah. Jesus. So have you actually made any money from YouTube? Nope. I know monetization was nothing back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think... Like, remember, I had no PC. Bro, for five, six years of my life, I remember trying to get an Elgato. <laughs> I'm about to search up this. Oh, yeah, it, here it is, here it is. Ulu FSFS. We were just spamming on the PC, because we would just make channel after channel after channel. Me and my friends. And we made this channel to, like, <laughs> create a Google Voice number to prank call. And we prank called a few people yeah. in, like, Detroit. I don't know if you know, Detroit, like, people over there are, like, really hostile. And they get really, really mad really easily. We upload this video. This is my friend. The, he was actually the S in the AFRASZ channel. He was the S, Shauner. We had something similar, but it never went through. I think it was called, like, RSA. We never had, like, a shared channel or anything. I really wanted it to be, but they never ended up, like, wanting to be a part of it. But we uploaded this, like, random prank call. I'm gonna send it through. I gotta take this off YouTube. I have to remove it. I gotta download it and then remove it from YouTube. But yeah, um, what was I saying? Like, even if you weren't gonna make a lot of money, it was easy to, like, just get monetized. There was no requirements. All you had to do was verify your phone number. It was 2013 when I made my first money and it was two cents. I was in Alabama at the time and I, like, it was, it's such a vivid memory to me. Like, I remember looking at my thing and I had two cents and I showed my mom and I showed my dad and they were like, oh my God, that's crazy. You actually made money from this thing. I made money before my before my older brother. I think the most I ever made was 6p. So you made money from it. You made money from it. I did, but I never cashed out 6p. My dad emailed all of his friends. He's like, oh, my son made two cents. He was so proud. <laughs> Everyone in my family was like, huh? It is kind of, it's also a figure of speech in India. Two cents means like, it's hard to translate it exactly. In Hindi, if you say like, oh, my son, you know, he's making two cents. He's got two cents to rub together, that kind of thing. You ever heard that phrase? It means that you're making money. It's like, it's, it's a metaphor to mean like, oh, he's making good money now. He can take care of himself. Oh, how much money is he making? But you don't want to say exactly how much. Oh, he's making yeah, yeah, two cents. Yeah. He's making two cents to to say like he's good enough. He's got he's got it down. So my dad said it in that phrase, but and everyone thought like, oh, uh, I'm making good money. But he literally meant that I made two cents. So he did it kind of as like a joke. But that was like a it was a roundabout way of saying that. But yeah, ten years has passed, and now I'm making nothing. Yeah, starting from let's square one. Go. <laughs> yeah. And actually, from Dude. that, one of my companies, I just have this company just to like write off expenses. I don't actually like do anything with it, but I probably should. I have a company called Two Cents Consulting from that like whole oh thing. God. This is Sam and and Cody, right? Cody. Yep, Cody. Yeah. Oh Both of y'all make YouTube videos. All three of us make YouTube videos. We all got the same sort of goals. We're all trying to make it happen and shit. What's like the long-term goal again? It was like IRL content? Yeah, or like just funny moments with the boys playing games. So that's like the dream content. What about what about you, Cody? I, I don't think I even asked you this. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm even sure. Like, what's like the dream content that you'd want to make? Like, if, if you were guaranteed views and money from youtube and all that stuff what would you make on youtube yeah pretty much just chatting and then just like games as well like um like fifa do you guys know about like the old like youtube url system did you guys ever have custom urls i think technically now you do have one though you everyone has yeah. a username now but if you had yeah. a custom url before like the username thing was a thing 
you get your previous URL grandfathered in. So it's like, uh-huh. and it stays and it stays forever. You got to go find your old URL. So youtube.com slash at something and then the channel username, which hmm. man, this channel used to have fucking like Bionicle videos on it and shit like that, like Lego stop motion videos. But, and the same thing is with mine. It's like at Afraz and it takes you to my channel. But back in the day, it was, it was, you could do U slash whatever for user or C slash or channel slash. And then you could go to like the channel uh, URL or the channel thing. But because I had a unique one, which was Afraz Ali, which is my full name, all I have to do is, and it, it, this works forever now, youtube.com slash Afraz Ali. I don't got to do nothing else. Just youtube.com slash Afraz Ali. And it goes to my channel. I'm grandfathered in. Do you guys have a URL like that? If That's you ever set a idea. custom URL Wait, in the past, so- you might have it. You might have it. Maybe. Show it me. I might have it. You know that YouTuber Ali A? He used to make Fortnite videos? Yeah, yeah. Dude, my <laughs> YouTube channel name could have been Ali A. Because A-L-I, that's my last name. And my first name is Afraz. So it's Ali A. Like, it might, that could have been my channel name. And he couldn't have done anything about oh, it because it's my actual name. <laughs> his name's not even Ali A. His name is like something else. This is one of my friends from back in the day who was making YouTube videos. And everyone in the comments is so pissed. This is such a stupid video. And it's like... All it is is this 15 second thing of like Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball playing and then it just shows like a <laughs> clip of 9-11. That's all it is. And it got 271 views. We were making the stupidest videos, dude. Bro, we used to ViewBot. Do you ever ViewBot? Don't you have to pay for that? Like way back around this time, we would, it was literally just applications you could download on like forum sites and it would open up windows. It was like custom made browsers and it would just open up a window and you put the link in where it would open up the window at that link, it would play the video for like 30 seconds, then it would close that window, and then it would open up another one. And then you could set it to like open up like five at a time. So when one of them closed, another one would be open, and there would always be like five open at once. But we did it too late. We weren't early enough with viewbotting. If you did it before, it would have worked. But we did it around the time where YouTube implemented that whole like 300, 301 plus like views thing you know where like youtube videos would say like 301 plus views it would get stuck at that it would do that to like check if the views are view botted and we do it it would say 301 views it would not go up and then we look the next day and it would say like two views so it was able to detect that it was view botting oh my gosh that's so yeah we did it too late we did it too late my mate did that if we did it like a year earlier we would have got like 50,000 views. My mate posted a video and it had like, I think 11 or 30k views, but all of his channel was just blowing up. So it was like 7k, 6k, one video got 2k. And then I think a week later, all of it went down to two. Damn. <laughs> that was the point, man. So yeah. they like, they retroactively like yeah. went back and. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Before that happened, like in like 2007, 2008, you could actually do it but you couldn't make money on YouTube in 2007. You had to be partnered and it was right. not easy to be partnered back then. Yeah, yeah, once they made the partner program easy, you, all you do is verify your phone number. That's when view botting stopped working for most people at least. I, I did not, not know how to do it. I'm sure some people figured it out, but. I guess it makes sense that that's like when that happened. Yeah, yeah. And I was view botting the wrong videos. I was view botting these like shitty like videos that I'm like recording on my on my laptop microphone. The fan is super loud. You can't even hear me. Like, it's <laughs> obviously no one's watching these videos. Like YouTube is not stupid. Like we were me and Sam thing. were talking about like how like or we briefly mentioned how like YouTube back then used to be a lot more authentic. Yeah, I agree. It's like everything is like staged. Every channel nowadays is always a millionaire doing rich shit rather than like a funny dude making fun content. I totally agree. I feel like it's part of the whole like Mr. Beastification of YouTube. It's 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 come full circle. Way back when all gaming videos, like the whole meta of gaming was just be as loud as you possibly can, like as human, like rip your vocal cords apart just being loud. And now people, and then people hated it. And now people are right back to it. Just be loud. <laughs> it's so true though. Like that's like, even people like Kai Sinat and speed did you ever end up doing anything with all those like uh like the reaction stuff that we talked about like any of those like property videos or anything like that did you ever end up using any of those no i i didn't use them because i i wanted to like niche down a bit further than like reactions gotcha so i decided like i don't want to do the reactions anymore yeah me too i'm i'm 
I reacted to a few things, but I'm done with reactions. I'm done with it. I'm going to be daily vlogging for like the next 30 days. The, it's so interesting seeing the people who make cool. videos about Mr. Beast or trying to get his attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's right. such a weird genre of YouTube now. Where oh, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I made the biggest cardboard okay. cutout of Mr. Beast and to get What's his attention, and I'm going to do it right uh, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, Wait, are you from America as well? Yeah, I live in the and then after I explained, after I finished like the whole story, then Cody joined. Damn it, I missed the story. By the way, let's make one thing absolutely clear. I invented the little dick click, okay? Back in like 2015, this was before Ugly God really popped off. He did that, that one song that was like, um, Bitch, I'll be my meat, give a fuck about what you think. You know that one, the one that he recorded on like his laptop mic. And he was, he popularized it, right? And, and he really put it on. But he claimed it as if he invented it, bro. He did not invent it. I invented it. And actually, even that song, like, uh, I Beat My Meat, that one didn't really even pop off on um, SoundCloud until a little later on. Like, when all those songs kind of blew up together. Like, FTBT and all that stuff kind of all popped off at the same time. And at the time, YouTube, because well, that's my entire focus was YouTube. They were shifting their thing to, like, okay, notification bell. You have to subscribe and you have to hit the notification bell. And they were, like... They're really, they're really shifting towards normie content too. They're trying to see, they're trying to test the waters in, and, and it proved to be successful and now it's working and now they do it. But they're testing the waters in how far can they abandon the people who actually, you know, will, will take advantage of their opportunities and actually use them to their fullest versus how, how, how much can they, how much can they appeal to specifically the people that, you know, are brainless and they like to be spoon fed all their thoughts and opinions about everything, right? So they implemented the trending page, which that's just controversy after controversy after controversy until they finally got rid of it and called it the explore page. They also took control of like uh, uh, suggested videos and they made them all like recommended rather than related videos. They just made it a lot more inconvenient to be subscribed to anyone. It's, it's, it's like a small thing, right? But if you want to subscribe to someone, you have to go from, it's go right from one button to three buttons. And it's nowhere near as enticing as it was just from a design perspective. And also it doesn't do as much because they were like repeatedly removing subscriptions from people's like pages. They were, you know, not showing actual uploads from your subscriptions in your sub box and things like that. It's just little ways for, for them to control, for them to remove the people who, who want to be free and decide what they consume and appeal to the people who will just, who will just take in everything and have all their tastes fed to them and and controlled by them and be subservient to that it's just uh, another step in that direction so at the time when there was a you know a bit of a rebellion right there always has been like a rebellion against youtube on youtube part of the community like saying like we don't want these features we want these features not these features and and Part of the rebellion at the time was all the people going, notification gang, notification gang. Like, be a part of the, like, show show to the YouTube community and to other YouTubers and all that stuff how important it is to be a part of communities and to watch things that you deliberately intend to watch rather than whatever YouTube is trying to feed you. And YouTube would push back and social media in general would push back by, like, making, like, oh, a KSI army? That's so cringe. You know, it's like PSYOP. It's PSYOPs to, like get people to think that these kinds of things are cringe. And actually, literally at that time, they unsubscribed like my channel from KSI's channel like three times. And so I'm on SoundCloud and this is a, a lot of this stuff is happening on SoundCloud. This is back in the golden era of SoundCloud, right? And there's all these meme rappers like Ugly God, but uh, there's a few others who, and it was actually not even Ugly God that started this, but they were like, oh, my dick is two centimeters or whatever. And I'm like, hey, we're the join the fucking clicks, bro. I'm in the click. We're the little dick click. And I'm like, I'm like trying to push for like active community members and uh, you know people who who, ha who who are like leaders of the community engaging with that community. You know, so I'm like encouraging. I'm trying to bridge the gap. You think, oh, there's no reason like little dick click. You don't. It's just something you you call your audience. It's not like something that you have to go that deep into. No, it actually was that deep. And because I was uploading all these Ugly God videos, or actually the songs, you know, Ugly God official audio, I was putting it in there, like in the comment section and all this stuff. Oh, shout out to the little dick click notification gang, you know? And all the like first like 50 comments that were all commenting immediately, I was like, little dick click. I was just posting memes in there all the time. And eventually it got so big 
he announced a mixtape called Lil Dick Clip. That's what it was going to be called. He literally announced a mixtape based off the meme that I made. It was going to be called Lil Dick Click, but it never ended up coming out. It had like fucking Luigi on the cover of it or something like that. Instead of embracing like where he came from and all the things that made him so great, like being ugly and the fake jewelry and like constantly funny yet okay, like not bad music and like memes no, like doing all this crazy shit on Snapchat, right? Instead of all that shit, he got lazy, decided to go for the money, get real jewelry. I remember he actually had a Lyrical Lemonade interview. And as far as I can remember, this may have been like the first Lyrical Lemonade interview ever. And it was uploaded on his channel. That was That's the only two videos that were on his channel. It was Water, which there was all these other Ugly God songs that were not on his channel, which was so stupid. That's why I uploaded them. Because he wouldn't upload them fucking idiots it was the water video and then the second video was lyrical lemonade interview with ugly god and then it was up there for like a month or something or a few weeks then they got taken down and in that interview he was saying he's like i'll never change i'll never be like all these other guys like in in the rap game who are full of themselves like i'll never take myself too seriously and then he he went and changed and he became full of himself and he took himself too seriously and then the little dick click died that was the story of the little dick click it was so much potential man he ugly god had so much potential it's such a shame because like he he had the opportunity he had it handed to him on a silver platter you can be a legend and he said no i don't want it it's just sad man it's just sad i i i don't like to think so pridefully right like man if i was at that level if i got that level of online clout i would not treat it like trash i would treat it like what it actually is i would use it to its fullest because that's what happened that's that's i've built an intuition for this shit i have i can see through a lot of these things like there was like the old like rhyme breakdown videos that i made like where i would predict the views to a t i'd be like okay this video has like three thousand views I suspect that like another two months are gonna go by and it's not gonna get that many views and then it'll spike up and get like 20,000 views and then it'll die off and then it'll get, it'll spike up like a month later and it'll get 100,000. And it, like it, and that exactly happens and it gets like 26,000 instead of 20,000. And then like a month goes by and it doesn't get any, it gets like a thousand views. And then like that next thing, it gets like 80,000 views. And I'm like only off by like a little bit, but I'm like predicting more than like Mystic Mac and I'm getting it right. Cause I built an intuition like that. And I, I, my intuition, it's slowly coming back to me. It's not what it used to be, but I see it right now. I, ha I have the vision for it. Whoever sticks around right now is coming up. I know it. I've been doing this for a long time, and I don't ever point out the fact that like I, I deserve the fucking credit for being one of the people who actually made it happen way back in the day when it really mattered a lot more. Oh, everyone... Everyone nowadays wants to like become a YouTuber. It's trendy now, okay? There's the people that are normal, the people that are on the fringes, that are outside of normalcy, and then there's the, you know, extreme, like, liberal, hardcore, oh, do, do, LGBTQ, whatever, right? Like, all this stuff that's like way, way outside the fringes, and all the normies that, that should be over here, that should listen to these people, are way over here just because it's trendy. And they look at me and they go, hey, weren't you like liberal back in the day? Why are you like trying to go back and be more religious? Weren't you atheist and all this stuff? Why are you trying to do all this stuff? Why are you so against all this like progressive ideology? Because you know? you're not really that. You're not that. I am closer to that than you are, naturally. You're just hopping on trends. Everyone knows someone today that's like, it's like, yo, guys, we're hella funny. Like when they're with their friend groups, we're hella funny. We should start a podcast. We should, you've probably heard this a million times. We should make YouTube videos, dude. Like how these guys make these YouTube videos. Like the same way that people look at like David Dobrik and these like guys in college want to make videos like them because they think it's so easy. We would look at the videos like the Minecraft YouTubers from back in the day and be like, this is so easy. Why can't we do this, you know? And we, the only difference between those guys saying the things today, hopping on trends today, going, oh, we should post videos online. We're like such a funny group. We could totally do it. The only difference between them and me is I was saying that shit 15 years ago and they're saying it today. I actually have podcast clips from 12, 13 years ago. I was 11 years old. I was 11 years old. I, where I, I'll ask my mom for it. My mom has it. That's literally what it is. It's Starting a podcast in 2023 is like starting a gaming channel in 2013. Everyone watches it. They think it's the easiest thing in the world. None of them actually realize how saturated the market is 
and how difficult it actually is to succeed in there, they all fail and it ends up being a giant waste of time for everyone involved. It's so cringe and no one ever wants to talk about it because everyone's, oh, so positive, positive, you have to be positive nowadays. So nobody ever calls out the fact that like, bro, your video is shit, your podcast is shit, it has three views on YouTube, get the fuck, stop wasting your fucking time. If you really look at what is like going on, you have to bring back bullying. You have to give people a bit of a, a bit of stress, a bit of hormesis, a bit of hardship, so that way they can test themselves, so they know that what they're doing is really made for them. If if a little bit of like somebody making fun of you, which happened to me with YouTube, is all it takes for you to stop doing YouTube, then you are not made to do YouTube videos. It's not for you. You shouldn't do it. That bullying that people are doing to you is actually a service to you. You should take it and embrace it and go like, okay, this is very helpful to me. Because people bully me out of doing other things. And I'm glad they did that. Because those things were not made for me. And the kind of people that get like two views on their podcast. And they're like, oh, hey, loyal fan base. Welcome back to episode 600. Where we do nothing unique or innovative at all. And I just sit here and waste hours of your weeks watching this like random bullshit normie garbage. Here's the problem with all these trends of like the the normie content trends. They're all effortless. They appear like people are making money by doing very little work or putting in very little creativity, whatever, which is never the case, but it appears that way. And, And because of that, it gets saturated super quickly. Here's a little piece of advice for aspiring YouTubers. If the kind of content you're, you're thinking about making is getting a lot of views on YouTube and people seem to be making it, doing that content very easily, It's not that easy. The feeling you should get when making content is not, I'm going to capitalize off of this trend that's already happening. The feeling you should get when making content is, oh my God, this is such a good idea. It blows my mind that no one has done this before. That's the feeling you should have when making YouTube videos. And it's never easy. Like growing in the space, it's it's like, it's like quantum, it's harder to do this than it is to do quantum physics. But there's a, a like theoretical physics quote that's like, if it's easy, you're doing it wrong. The moment a new genre is starting to pop off and you hop on a trend instead of making the trend, you're already too late. All of these videos are gone, bro. But I've learned so much from them. Upon this rock, I build my church. We are coming up. This is happening. That's basically it. That's all I got to say. Get rich or die trying. Okay, bye guys.